Hi, I'm Bob, author of Become a Photoshop Expert in a Day by Mastering Layers. There are many applications that use artificial intelligence to create or modify images. Some work well, and some, well, they need work. Midjourney is one of the best standalone AI image creation applications, and it isn't hard to use. And Adobe Firefly AI is built into the current beta of Photoshop. The basic difference between the two? Midjourney is better for creating new images from scratch, and Photoshop is better for modifying existing images. So let's take a look and see how it works. Midjourney runs inside the free Discord application, which is a platform for hosting communities, and it was originally popular with gamers. It still is. Discord runs on the Windows and Mac desktop and on your iPhone or Android phone, and you install it like any other application. Midjourney is a community in Discord, and you use the chat feature to tell its bot what you want. And you can see down here on bottom, that's where we have the chat window. Now, you don't have to use Discord to use Midjourney. You can run it in a web browser, but it works better and you get more features in Discord. I have this picture of adorable kittens in a basket. And what I want to do is add more background. So the first thing I need to do is upload this picture into Discord. When you start using Midjourney, you'll see the creations of many other users. Let's go back to it. And you can see there's newbies and all these people, all this stuff that they are doing. So you don't want to grab any of these. You know, it's probably legal just because this is other people's things. And here's another one of these. I'm going to go back to my own private server. So this way I don't have to see anybody else's stuff and nobody is going to see my stuff. Creating your own private server in Midjourney on Discord is beyond the scope of this article. So let's not worry about it for now. So at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to make sure my cursor is flashing there. And what I'm going to do is upload a file. So I'm going to click this plus sign and I choose upload a file. So I upload it. I hit enter. There it is. And you notice that Discord isn't really doing anything with it yet. So what I want to do is I'm going to right click the image. And from this pop-up menu, I'm going to choose copy link. So that puts the web address of this image in my clipboard. I'm going to put in, you notice there's a few options here. I'm going to put in the keyword forward slash imagine. And when I do that, Discord comes back or Midjourney comes back with the keyword prompt. So now I can type in a text prompt to get what I want. So there's a lot of options and switches available, but that's the number one that you have to know. So I'm going to paste that link from the clipboard. Now, among the many switches and commands that Midjourney has, one of them is called Zoom Out, but I can't use it because Zoom Out works only with images created directly in Midjourney. It doesn't work properly with uploaded images. And hopefully that'll change some point in the future, but it's not there now. So what I'm going to do is now that I pasted in the URL, I'm going to type in this prompt. And I hit enter. And this is the result it gives me. I'm going to click it to expand it a little bit. Um, <laughs> that's, that's interesting. I don't know. I really don't know what the heck this thing is in the lower left corner. But this is not at all what I asked for. I'm going to escape out of that. What I'll do instead is I want to test Midjourney's capability with creating an image like this from scratch. Now, how to create a good prompt to create the image you want is easily a whole blog post by itself. So I'm going to do just a simple one. So I'm going to click down there in the chat area, forward slash and enter. So I got a prompt and I'm going to enter this prompt. I'm going to say, and you notice the switch that I put at the end, dash dash AR three colon two. That means give me an aspect ratio of three to two. I'm going to enter that. And what Midjourney creates is very realistic. So these are all very similar to the original image that I had. Now, if I want to grab one of these, so let's say I want to grab the third one here. I like the way they 
have their legs kind of hanging out of the basket. I'm just going to escape. So I have a bunch of switches there. So this is the third one. I'm going to click this U3 means upscale the third one. And there it is. This is now a high resolution. And if I want it, all I have to do is right click it, two finger tap, whatever you call it, and then save image. And now I can save this on my computer and do whatever I want with it. So let's use the same examples in the Photoshop beta. I already have opened the original image of the kittens. And the first thing I'm going to do down in the layers panel is I'm going to click the lock button to unlock the layer. And let me zoom out a little bit. Because what I want to do is I want to add more background to the left, right, and top, but not on the bottom. So the easiest way to do this is to uncrop. So I'm going to get the crop tool. I could either hit C on the keyboard or I could click the crop tool button there. And I want to bring the right side out the same amount as the left side. So what I'm going to do is on the Mac, I'm going to hold down the Option key or on Windows, hold down the Alt key. And that way, sometimes it fights with you. That way I've uncropped an equal amount on both sides. And now I'm just going to go on the top and I'm going to uncrop about like that and then hit the Enter key. So that's now sealed it in. So now that we have some space for the background, I guess I could zoom in a little bit. I need to tell Photoshop where to put the additional background. So I'm going to get the marquee tool. I'll just hit M or I can click the marquee tool there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a little bit of the boundary of the image like this. So I have some of the original image on the right and top and left sides. But you notice it's the interior that's selected. So now I need to invert the selection. So I could press Control Shift I or Command Shift I in Windows, or I could do that from the Select menu. So now I have the outer area selected and not the inner area. Now you notice we've got this floating bar here. And the first item in the bar is Generative Fill. So all I need to do, this is so easy, all I have to do is click it, click in there, and then hit the Enter key. And look at that. This is great. This is exactly what I wanted. This gives me a seamless background, and it looks like it was already there. By the way, notice on the Layers panel, this additional background is a layer mask. If I turn off this eyeball, then here's the original image. And I could turn the eyeball, and there it is again. And if I want to merge it, I can simply click both of those, and then either Command-E on the Mac or Control-E in Windows, and that merges them. Okay, so this is great, but how is Photoshop with creating this image from scratch? I'm going to create a brand new blank image, 3,000 by 2,000 pixels. So I'll just press Command-N or Control-N, and I will make this 3,000 by 2,000. And like before, I need to tell Photoshop where I want the image to be. Well, I want the image to be on the entire canvas. So I'm just going to press Command-A or Control-A in Windows. That selects all of this blank canvas. So now I'm going to go down here into that generative fill. I'm going to click in there. And now I'm going to type in the same prompt that I typed into Midjourney. And notice I don't have to specify an aspect ratio because this image is going to be the aspect ratio of this canvas. It's going to go on this canvas. So I hit Enter. <laughs> oh, meow. This is bad. OK, now this is one sample. I'm going to go over onto the panel on the right. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And you notice there's this category of variations. So I have three variations to look at. So there's one. I'm going to click. There's the second. There's the third. The third is the best, but it's clearly not what I asked for. So this isn't to say that Photoshop's AI image generation is always bad. Sometimes it comes out OK. Feel free to experiment with other prompts you might think of, and you might actually get some that you like. AI image generation is moving at a rapid pace, but it's still in the early stages. 
Midjourney is clearly better for creating images from scratch, though it's known to have trouble drawing fingers. But expanding existing images is something it just doesn't do right now. On the other hand, Adobe Photoshop Beta is great for modifying existing images, but it lags far behind Midjourney for creating new images from scratch. So until next time, my name is Bob, and if you like this video, check out my Excel channel too. Link is below.